Kane fans, man, what's good, man? It's your boy Wise. I'm back. About to do this. Um, it's my fucking Toledo versus Miami preview, man. Um, I'm at work, but I figured I'd just go ahead and, you know what I'm saying, do the preview. Um, shout out to my dog, Reek and Swag, man. Um, definitely looking forward to seeing you join the Canes group me, fam. You know what I'm saying? Come join the group me, man. We have a lot of great conversation in there. Um, I'll put the link uh, for the Canes group me um, in the description, man. If you just love talking about, you know what I'm saying, a bunch of different points with the Canes, man, come fuck with us. We we got a lot of knowledgeable people in the group me that know the team up and down. You know what I'm saying? Um, a lot of cats that, you know, know a lot of stuff that I don't know. Um, and we just, we got some real unique perspectives in the group, man. So a lot of canes talk to help the days go by at work and everything, man. Shit is dope. Um, we're going to get into this preview, man. So we're going to do this a little different. Um, I'm in my car today, you know what I'm saying? But what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the Toledo game last year because that was, you know, we had had that game coming off the hurricane and shit like that or whatever. It was off for, I think, three weeks before we played again. Pretty much a month. Um, but I want to just remind y'all, you know what I'm saying, of how the game went. So, you know, Walton, if I'm not mistaken, he broke out on the run, uh, the 40-yard run or whatever for the TD, you know what I'm saying, early. And um, when we got the ball back, Walton broke out for um, – for the 82-yard run, he got caught at the three-yard line. These are the next three plays. Walton for a negative run. Homer for a three-yard run. Homer for a negative run. We kick a field goal. We go up 10-0. At that point, on Toledo's next four drives, they put up points every single time, and they go to have with the lead 16 to 10. Now granted we gave up one touchdown and three field goals, but you know, it was plenty of opportunities, you know, for them to actually um to score touchdowns, man. Like I don't know if y'all remember what the fuck happened last year, but shit wasn't looking good. You know what I'm saying? And then so you got 16 to 10 and to be honest, I mean, Miami did something in my opinion that was kind of unrealistic to expect on a consistent basis you know we closed the game scoring on six of our last we scored six of our last seven drives the only drive that we didn't score on um like to close the game out uh malik threw an interception you know what i'm saying but you can't expect that on saturday you know what i'm saying especially being on the road you know this team most likely is gonna start slow we can't expect that shit last year logan woodside was um 28 of 48 for 342 yards and three touchdowns now granted woodside he in the league now you know what i'm saying so i mean not the same quarterback but the guy that they have backing him up may not be as good but don't forget he was 28 of 48 342 yards three tds and no picks but i don't know if y'all remember his receivers they had at least like seven or eight drops Easy, like easy money. They was cooking D Delaney, and I think it was uh number three. He was getting loose, but he dropped some. If they had caught those balls, this man would have threw for over 400 yards on us, close to 500 yards, and probably like five touchdowns. And it would have been a whole different story. So I say that to say the quarterback ain't there, but the guy that they have, he looked like shit. He was 11 or 16, I think, they first game. Granted, they really ain't play nobody, but. They really don't play nobody, you know what I'm saying? So that's they're going to have confidence coming into this game. And then the receiving core is better than it was last year. You know what I'm saying? Thompson, the their best receiver, he was actually going to the NFL, but he got hurt, so they granted him a medical red shirt, so he's back. You know what I'm saying? You got Jay Johnson, you know what I'm saying? He's He, he was doing his thing. Then you got the other Johnson, which is D. Johnson. I think that's number three. He was lighting shit up like they have a really good receiving core. And one of our weaknesses right now is our secondary, in particular the corner. So um, 
if if he played Dean heavy, how he played Delaney heavy in his game last year, it's a good chance we're going to lose. It's just certain stuff we probably not going to be able to overcome, man, because even with scoring on them drives like that, I don't know if y'all remember, but in the fourth quarter, you know what I'm saying, uh, Deontay Johnson scored two touchdowns. They brought the game to 38-30 with pretty much six minutes left. You know what I'm saying? We gave up 23 first downs to these cats last year. And we lost the time of possession 36 minutes to 24 minutes. So a lot of things was in their favor, to be honest, with last year. Like, a lot of things was in their favor. You know what I'm saying? They was 13 of uh, 23 on third down on us last year. You know what I'm saying? We was only three of nine. Like, we, we got to make sure that we come out and do what we need to do, man. Between Thompson and the two Johnsons, man, them boys had 259 of the 342 yards that Woodside threw for last year. So, we just got to make sure we do what it do. The running backs are better this year as well. They only had, like, 85 rushing yards on us or something like that last year. But the running backs are better. The Cats got more experience now. Um, they got one that's, you know, he's pretty, he's not explosive to me, but he's explosive for a Toledo back. You know what I'm saying? But you know how that go, man. Sometimes the defense, you know, don't show up and do what they do. But, you know, um, we just got to make sure we pay attention to that shit, man. We can't be coming out starting slow and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? It's just not going to work. But a couple of keys to victory. So the offense has to fucking run the ball we gotta run the ball and we gotta commit to running the ball early in the game i don't give a fuck if it's not effective we have to run the ball find a way toledo's not stronger than us they're not bigger than us i don't get it you know what i'm saying they the old line better find a way to move these motherfuckers out the way we need to run the rock if we don't have a successful day running the ball, there's a good chance that we lose this game. Straight up. I'm not even bullshitting. I can't put trust in Malik to be throwing, you know what I'm saying, hella passes. We need to run the fucking ball. You know what I'm saying? We got three running backs that can get in there and make it do what it do. In my opinion, I think the starting O-line, I think they need to put Donaldson back at right guard. He's struggling at tackle. Put St. Louis back at right tackle. Let Scaife start at left tackle, you know what I'm saying? And then have, um, obviously, Gauthier at center and then start Bullwear. You know what I'm saying? I think that would be our best lineup right now. Um, I don't know if y'all noticed, but Gaynor got some reps at guard uh, against Savannah State because I guess the coaches just saw, you know what I'm saying, that we weren't doing shit. But Mahoney, they said he graded out the highest, but I, I seen a couple of clips from the game. He got put on his ass by a db or some shit like that so fuck all that man we need to make sure we can run the fucking ball second point we have to target jeff thomas richards ain't playing most likely at the end of the day jeff thomas the best receiver on miami's roster period right now i don't care what nobody say since he's gotten here he's produced the most out of the guys that are left on the roster richards has been hurt thomas has been producing call it what you want it was something on twitter that was like who the best jeff thomas the best receiver we got right now we need to get him the ball dog give jeff some screens you know what i'm saying a couple of short routes get him going early you know what i'm saying and we need to make sure we target brevin too like don't make the game difficult for malik Rick. don't do it give him a lot of easy dinking dunks to get his confidence going early on don't be taking all these crazy shots downfield and shit like that we need to control the line of scrimmage. We have to. Line up in the motherfucking I formation with Chalk at fullback and run that bitch. Stop playing fucking 90% of our plays out of shotgun and pistol. That shit don't work, dog. That RPO shit is the worst way to try to get your offensive line in a groove, you know what I'm saying, to get them boys going as far as in the run game. Stop it. Run I formation. It's Toledo. Like, we got to try something new. The shit that we trying don't work. They keep talking about execution and shit, but we not executing. We start slow every game. Dog, this shit got to stop. For real, Rick. 
give Cager a couple of jump balls, you know what I'm saying, in the red zone type shit, you know what I'm saying, get him engaged. In the second half, though, I say we come out and spread it out. Fuck it. Go four or five wide on them. As soon as the second half start, spread it out. Get they bitch ass tired, you know what I'm saying? Go with a little up-tempo. And then once the mid-third quarter hit, you start pounding the ball on the ground again, and you tire they ass out. That's the ball game. I don't expect us to score a crazy amount of points, you know what I'm saying? But they need to make sure that they keep Malik's attempts no more than 30. We don't need no more than 30 passes. 24 to 28 is the range that he needs to be in because we don't need to force him to try to win the game for us. Last year, Malik was, what, 27 to 33 for 333 yards and three touchdowns? That was, like, his best game of the season or second best game. So I don't expect that again. We just need to make it do what it do, man. On defense, though, Banda, listen to me. Do not fucking play Robert Knowles. That shit point shaving, bruh. I do not want to see Knowles on the field at all. If you telling me that Knowles is better than Gervin Hall right now, you fucking crazy. Put Gervin Hall on the field or either don't play Knowles at all. Let Amari, you know what I'm saying, take the backup reps when Jaquan come out and, you know, red one. I don't give a fuck. I do not want to see Robert Knowles on the field. That boy's a fucking liability. He might be a star at Green Tree, but he's a fucking practice player, dog. Do not put him on the fucking field. Javante Dean, Manny Diaz, listen up, bro. Javante Dean is ass. If you play him a lot, we probably going to lose the game. Javante Dean is literally D. Delaney 2.0. Last year when we played Toledo, D. Delaney got cooked all fucking game. The whole time he was in there, they was abusing that boy. We don't need that shit, bro. Keep Dean on the fucking sideline, period. He don't need to be out there because they slot guy. Fuck it, any of they guys they got, they going to give Dean that work. And I ain't got time for that shit, bro. He was the one getting worked the LSU game, bro. He's trash. I'm sorry. Y'all made the wrong evaluation, you know what I'm saying, when y'all got him. Dude, trash. Leave him the fuck off the field. Now, I know you're going to play him some, Manny, but don't play him on third down. Don't play him in critical moments. Never leave him one-on-one. You always need a motherfucker over the top. Tell him play up tight, you know what I'm saying, only man coverage because he don't understand how to play zone. We start getting in the zone, and you got to pick somebody up at this point. Dean get confused. Only man. Play him at a minimal, dog. Do not play Finley at striker at all. They slot receivers ain't no fucking joke. If you're going to play the striker, Diaz, it need to be Derek Smith. Straight up. And if you're not going to play striker, are you going to have McLeod out there? Dog, you bet not be fucking leaving the slot receiver open like you was doing all last year. I've whole fucking alignment messed up. You got the motherfucking slot. Nobody over them. Any quarterback with any sense, they like, as soon as they call her, whoop, boom, hot route, quick hit, giving up five, six, seven yards on first down. Bruh, stop that bullshit. We don't need to see none of that shit tomorrow. Hey, Joe Jackson, dog, I need you to show up. I need you to show up, bruh. You ain't did shit yet this whole season. You look slow. You look sluggish. Show the fuck up. Play Blades. If we need to put somebody at nickel, go Mike Jack, Bandy, and Blades. If we go in striker, then it need to be Derek Smith. Other than that, it ain't too many other motherfuckers we gonna be playing. So keep the rotation tight. Especially in the secondary, dog. Keep the rotation tight. We only need to play three safeties if you ain't going to play Gervin, dog. Straight the fuck up. Willis, he going to wreak havoc. You already know what it is. We just got to find a running mate to Willis. You know what I'm saying? I would say play Nesta. You know what I'm saying? He going to be bullish. You know what I'm saying? Play Nesta. Get my dog out there. Get him his fucking reps. You know what I'm saying? He probably will really help Willis out being out there. Um, I know he kind of don't know what to do sometimes, but we got to get something fucking rolling. But if we just be aggressive... We're going to have to make a lot of open field tackles, a lot of them. Limit the amount of punts Fiegel's going to have because you know he's going to fuck up. Other than that, man, just protect the football, play smart, dog. I got the Canes 35-14. You already know what it is. It's your boy Wise. I'm signing out.